just look at, at, at New York City. It's an absolute disaster. Uh, you, you've got rats r- actually running around openly on the streets. Uh, it's they, Along with criminals. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've cut the, the, the police spending down by $5.6 billion. Um, and they go, oh, well, we're going to tax uh, congestion and cars driving around to clean the air. Meanwhile, they cut the, the budget for sanitation. So you get clean air, but dirty streets. And there's no congestion anymore because nobody's working in the place. The buildings are more than half empty. I think a third. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. And I'm Kerry Lutz, your host. It's December 8th. We've got one of your most favorite popular guests on, Martin Armstrong. We're going to change things a little bit. Of all the guests I have on, Marty, you by far receive the most questions. I try to ask them, but sometimes I I miss them and then people get upset with me. So I decided we're going to change it up a little bit. We're just going to do a Q&A from many of our listeners out there. And then I've got a couple for you. But we're going to start off with this one. And from my friend uh, from the land down under, please ask Mr. Armstrong to give his interpretation of what the U.S. debt clock is trying to convey. He has a picture attached. We're not going to bother with that. But it shows a dollar supply at a negative number, but still diminishing, and links it to the dollar-silver-gold ratio. What's going on in that situation? Thanks in advance. Uh, Well, I mean... The real value of gold, it goes up, like, for example, um, gold had bottomed in 1976 at $100. It rose to about 400 by December uh, 79. But the last six weeks, it went from 400 to 875. Why? Because that's when Russia invaded Afghanistan. The real mover of gold is not inflation or, you know, this this kind of propaganda all the time. It's when confidence in government collapses. That's what we're really facing at this point. Um, 2024 is going to be the year from political hell. It's not just the U.S. I mean, you look around, you've got elections everywhere. Russia, uh, the head of the EU is up. You got British elections coming. Um, I mean, every it's like you're going to take whatever politics there is, put it in a jar, shake it, and, you know, and, and pour it out. It, it's just crazy everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to, I got a question for you later about the Argentine election. Here, next question is, China seems to be transmogrifying or morgraphing into an Asian cacotopia, which I think means dystopia, if uh, my vocab serves me correct. Question, by 2032, is China going to look like a technocratic empire worse than an Orwellian big brother nightmare? Is truth going to end up more stranger and more dangerous than fiction? Uh no, not really. Uh, what we're, what our computer is showing. Oh yeah, you shut that thing off. <laughs> um, what our our computers are actually showing is that for 2032, we're looking at all governments basically changing, and that that applies to China as well. Uh, so it's not that. I mean, a lot of the propaganda about China. Uh, I mean, I can tell you most of the actual problems there with the banking, et cetera. China warned uh, its provinces and the banks not to borrow in dollars. They were doing so because interest rates were cheap. And they said, do not do that. They did not act as an authoritarian. They probably should have and (laughs) just simply outlawed it, but they didn't. So that's why you have banks failing, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, the people in China are not about to go back to communism or anything like that. The same thing in Russia. They've all had enough of that stuff. Uh, and once you give them a taste of freedom, I mean, there's a lot of billionaires in both Russia and China. They're not communists anymore. Um 
I was talking to one, you know, congressman and he goes, oh, you know, China's communist. I said, do you understand what communism even is? You know, the government owns everything. I said, you know, it's a it's a question of saving face. You know, they still call it the Communist Party. Uh, it's not communism, but if they change the name of the party, then they'd have to take down the picture of Mao, you know, and admit <laughs> that they're wrong. And take so them it, off the money too, right? Yeah, take them I mean, off it's, you want. <laughs> it, it would be a major psychological announcement that sorry for fifty some years we were wrong. Um, <laughs> So it, it's just opened up. I mean, you people can freely travel and, and you got private ownership and everything. And it's they just kept the name. That's it. Um, but, you know, you're looking at uh, China's economy got into a lot of trouble, mainly because they went very draconian with the whole COVID stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, locking people down. And, and when you do that, the the GDP collapses. People can't go to work. Uh, you have, um, uh, you know, a portion of the class that, that have lost their homes because they couldn't work and they couldn't make payments. Um, you know, so a lot of these politicians, not just in China, but also throughout America and Europe, are beginning to realize what they did was serious. Uh and, and that's we warned really, about it. You and I warned about it too. Yeah, look, it's you know the inflation we have here is because of shortages. It's not speculation. So raising interest rates is not going to make you know going to make it rain or anything else. It's uh, that's why the Fed's kind of like in a between a rock and a hard place. I mean, it can it sees the inflation, yes. And then you can manipulate the CPI down to pretend it's not there. But um, the reality is, is that you still go to stores. I mean, I just went to the store the other day and there was stuff that wasn't there. Yeah, I see it. I see it. And what is there is uh, being shoplifted in places like uh, L.A. and San Francisco. You know, I Um, went into a CVS in uh, I was out in L.A. and everything was under lock and key. I wanted a bottle of eye drops. They were like 20 bucks. I had to wait 15 minutes for a salesperson to come. I went to the same CVS down the street from me in Florida. All the racks are open. You can get almost whatever you want there. They have locked up some high value items. I will say that, but I was able to get the same drops, pick them up myself. And no greater contrast than that of Next question, how far will gold fall in this cycle? Some are predicting a drop of 1450 to 1500 US before really taking off time frame. So I guess how far is it going to drop? Will it go to 1450, 1500 in what time frame? Um that's a bit extreme, but what we're really looking at is um I'm hoping to see a pullback in gold uh, going into January, we're, we're only talking basically a few weeks ahead. Um, if we get a low in January, then gold would be in a position to rise for most of the year. If you get a new high in January, then it's the opposite. But we, what you have to understand here is that we have uh, in 2024 an awful lot of problems uh, politically around the world. And that sort of uncertainty is what provides the underlying base for gold. Uh, And I mean, just look at at, at New York City. It's an absolute disaster. Uh, You've got rats actually running around openly on the streets. Uh, It's along with criminals. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they've cut the, the the. Police spending down by five point six billion dollars, um, and they go, oh well, we're going to tax uh, congestion and cars driving around to clean the air. Meanwhile, they cut the the budget for sanitation, so you get clean air but dirty streets. And there's um, no congestion anymore because nobody's working in the place. The buildings are more than half empty. I think a third are occupied now. And twenty uh, percent of the space is vacant, but uh, the rest of it is just on care and maintenance. 
All right. And this ties in with the next question. You answered the other question about precious metals when they'll when they'll start moving. So we need to look for January, whether it makes a new high or low. If we carry the trend now, it looks like it could be hitting a low there. Uh, but um, Martin, you moved to Florida because your model said it would be the best state going forward. People are moving to Florida and Texas. But what five states did your model say will fare the best in the coming years? And he says, we need multiple state choices instead of simply reciting the states we are all moving to. <laughs> um, we're going to publish a report on that uh, and do a, a more detailed look because we get an awful lot of people that want to know. Um, Florida is still number one, I can tell you, mainly because... Um, Texas is getting inundated with all the illegal aliens moving across mm -hmm. and uh, even places like Austin and things like this that used to be really nice. You're starting to get, you know, rising crime and things of that nature. And I was just out in, in Austin. A lot of them said, gee, I think I'm going to move to Florida now. <laughs> I said, well, gee, well, go to the East Coast, please, you know. <laughs> I mean, the traffic's already doubled here. I mean, it's um, to get to Florida, they got to swim. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I-10 is about the worst interstate highway on the planet, and that's what connects Texas and Florida eventually. Um, yeah, I've been, and that's a follow-up to that. To which five countries did your model say would fare the best going ahead? Uh, short term, basically, it's still uh, largely the United States. Um, what you have to understand is, I, I know a lot of people get all, you know, worked up over the debt and things of this nature, but we also have the largest economy. And the main issue is, is that we, our economy is a consumer-based economy. Compare it to Germany. Germany is a mercantile type. Uh, in other words, they manufacture things and want to sell it to somebody else. Um, the, you look at the net worth of, of the average German, it's less than an Italian because they keep their taxes very high. They're afraid of inflation, things of that nature. So they really suppress their own people. Uh, and that mercantile model is is like from the 1800s, you know. Uh, uh, in contrast... China has looked at, at both models. And if you pay attention, you'll see China is trying to mimic the consumer base from the United States. They understand what made the United States the biggest economy in the world. And that was the whole issue. So China is trying to develop its own um, consumer based economy, you know, this Silk Road, things of this nature. Uh, and uh, so uh, U.S. is still number one. Uh, Mexico is actually, you know, pretty, you know, it's been pretty interesting to a lot of people because they did not do the uh, uh, the draconian COVID lockdown stuff. Uh, a lot of people went there uh, mainly because they didn't have to be vaccinated to go for a simple vacation. Uh, mm -hmm. And so you have an awful lot of people also moving towards Mexico. And um, so I think, you know, you also, you know, you have others going down to like Uruguay um, uh, and you're, you're beginning to see like, you know, Argentina overthrowing the, the left. Um, you're seeing the same thing down in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a shift uh, I mean, you've had this leftist idea in South America for such a long time, and it's done nothing but suppress the people. Um, I mean, Argentina used to be one of the richest countries in the world. That's uh, right. Most people don't realize that. Turn of the century. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, then in comes the, the communism stuff, the Marxist agenda, and <clears throat> they basically wiped out the economy uh, and people right. have never advanced since yeah and the only the buildings the architecture is magnificent there in buenos aires but uh they're living off their capital 
from 100 years ago. So as long as you raised Argentina, I have a question for you. With uh, Milley's uh, avowal to eliminate the central bank, and I guess to dollarize the economy, um, is it going to work? Can, in this day and age, we uh, truly control monetary growth and uh, and actually make an economy grow? Um, no, I mean, uh, I just did a piece on that. Pegging to the dollar is not going to be a great idea. Because what when you peg, it's different than a fixed exchange rate. Um, for example, in the Bretton Woods, it was fixed exchange rate, but you didn't import influences from other countries. When you peg uh, a, a currency like to the dollar, if the dollar raises, you know, we raise interest rates, they're raised there as well. If, if we have inflation, it's immediately exported to them. Um, hostage. They're held hostage. Yeah, it, it's not the same thing. And a lot of these politicians, they don't really understand there, you know, there are three monetary systems, fixed rate, pegging and a floating rate. Um, Milton Friedman's idea of a floating rate, which he first raised in 1953, was that it would be a check in balance <clears throat> against the politicians. Um you know, I knew Milton, you know, personally. I mean, I I think the problem with it is that the assumption that the, the politicians would actually ever be responsible and is is kind of not <laughs> uh, not realistic. Uh, uh, I mean, this is why the Fed's in trouble. If the Fed raises interest rates, uh, back in the 30s, the U.S. government had a balanced budget. So... The idea, okay, fine, we can raise interest rates to affect demand or lower them. And we were the demand. But now the government is the biggest borrower in the system. If the Fed raises interest rates to get us to stop spending so much, it has <clears throat> it only increases the spending of government. No politician goes down, oh, gee, the Fed raised interest rates so they want us to spend less. Let's cut the budget. And it will never happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah here this is my own personal favorite question and we got probably 50 or 60 but we can't go through all of them um also could you ask martin if he has studied specifically the cycle of moral corruption as a as a social phenomenon are we anywhere near the top or do we have room to grow to new heights <laughs> here in europe seems like they are empty the uh, uh, it's not his first language. They emptied uh, the gates of they opened the gates of hell, and no single evil has remained down. This is part of why uh, civilization collapses. Uh, at, at the end, you you get this complete corruption because you know government is keep trying to survive, and as a result, it just it. Uh, you know, it just it just basically is like a cancer that eats them apart. I mean, take like what they did to Trump in New York. All right. Saying that, oh, he un he overvalued his assets. And, right, he had a disclaimer. and he had a disclaimer. Don't rely on my numbers. It's a guesstimate. Yeah. But it, it, the, the point is, is that it, it's so absurd. You go to a bank. The bank has its own appraisers. You yeah. can put down whatever you think it is. They're the bank's going to say, "Well, we think it's only this." So exactly. what they're doing to Trump is saying, "Well, we think the value should have been this, even though you paid off the loan. Doesn't matter." All right. Um, the problem is once you create that precedent, they can go down the line and start going after every company in New York City. Every company on the big board, everybody puts values down. Yeah, there's a cost basis, but then there's a, a a market basis. And the bank doesn't want to know what you paid for Trump Tower 30 years ago when they're going to collateralize it. They want to know what it's worth today. So exactly. you're going to give them a number. They're going to get an appraiser to come up with a number or their uh, their MBAs will do a spreadsheet. And then you like haggle. 
and then you agree on a value and that's that's the way these loans take place so they valued it at less than half what he did they still made the loan so obviously they weren't relying on any purported false representation i'm going back to my days as a lawyer so and there's no damage but sometimes it doesn't matter if there's damage or not if there's fraud you don't want it in the system but nonetheless uh specifically they were not relying on this anyway uh so the moral corruption cycle uh is there any limit to it when does it crash when society yeah, no i mean um we're starting to get into the crash mode uh you take this 2024 election we have here in the states i don't care who wins either side they're both going to say it's rigged mm -hmm. yeah so you're looking at a situation now where this um this election in particular is just not going to be accepted by either side doesn't matter Okay. <laughs> um, you had Hillary starting it back in 2016. Oh, Putin and Putin did it. I really won all this other kind of stuff. And then, you know, 2020 election. Um, <clears throat> I mean, this it's just building. You can see it. Yeah. So, I mean, for the United States, for the Biden administration to even allow these these lawsuits uh, uh, against Trump, uh, it, it shows you something is significant. Normally, you charge somebody like that, their credibility goes down. Yeah. His has gone up. <laughs> He's 47% mm -hmm. uh, higher than any other Republican on the field. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, that's, so that's, that is kind of showing you the collapse in confidence in government itself. Mm hmm. Um, and then you had Argentina, you know, say, oh, well, that's a good idea. We should criminally charge my opponent. Brazil tried the same thing with, with Bar you know, Bolsonaro. But, I mean, you end up in a situation, once you do that, Slippery there stuff. is no, re there's no going back. Uh, yeah. it, it's the same thing, you know, they were, they <clears throat> had to go and, and impeach Trump. Okay, fine. Don't you realize you okay, you do that when it's your turn, they're gonna come after you for the same thing. It, you know, it so they're going after Biden. I mean, it, it to me it's just the I've worked on Capitol Hill. I can't imagine how stupid these people really are. Um <laughs> they well, really yes. think what oh we'll we'll impeach Trump. They just look at that immediate election. They don't look at what that means long term. Mm -hmm. uh, you start doing this, they're, the other side is going to start doing it. it. It's that's just that's Washington. Yeah.